We believe that one day Messiah will come to establish his worldwide kingdom. Then the bodily resurrection of the righteous dead will take place and they will reign with Christ in his kingdom on earth. We therefore pray for the peace of Jerusalem. When Jesus talks about Jerusalem, you can read it in Matthew 5, verse uh, 34. There he says, heaven is God's throne. Earth is God's footstool. And Jerusalem is the city of the great king. That's even a quotation from Psalm 48, verse 2. Mount Zion, the city of the great king. One day, Messiah will come. One day, Jesus Christ will come back in glory. He was raised from the dead. From the Mount of Olives, he went to the heavens. The cloud came, the cloud that is covering the Shekhinah, the glory of the Lord. That cloud came, you can read it in the beginning of the book of Acts in the first chapter. And then two white men, angels, come. And the disciples of Jesus hear them say, this same Jesus that has been taken from you by the cloud, by the Shekhinah glory, will one day come back in the same way as you have just seen him go. The cloud again will come. He will bring Jesus back to planet Earth. And then the Shekhinah glory will enter into the holy of holiest of the final temple that one day will stand in the midst of Jerusalem. Messiah will come to establish his worldwide kingdom. And when that happens, the bodily resurrection of the righteous dead will take place. Now, let me explain that a little bit. The Jewish people expect Expected the coming of the true Messiah, the great son of David, the king of kings and the lord of lords, to sit in the heart of Jerusalem, and so that peace from Jerusalem would fill the whole earth. But there were many who came and claimed to be the true Messiah, but they were not. Um, and so the Jewish people had established certain requirements, certain points that the true Messiah should meet in order to be accepted as the true Messiah. First of all, he must have a very special relationship with Almighty God, and that should show itself in signs and wonders. Well, during the years that Jesus walked among the Israelites in Israel, they saw all the miracles, the signs, the wonders, the healings, etc. So special relationship, signs and wonders. He should be a descendant from the line of King David. Well, in the beginning of the Gospels, you read that both Mary and his adoptive father, uh, Joseph, were coming from the royal line of Israel, from the house of David. He had to do many other things, but among them, one of the most important was to bring the resurrection of the righteous dead. And then after he had done that, then he would sit on the throne of Father David. And then after the resurrection, the bodily resurrection, then he would judge the nations. Now, in John 12, you can read how he raised Lazarus from the dead. And Lazarus was already dead for 40 days. There was a stench of, de uh, of a decaying body was already around the tomb. And Jesus says, Lazarus, come out. And there he comes to the utter amazement. And then this spreads among the people of Israel. They say, he's really the true Messiah. He has started to bring in the bodily resurrection of the righteous dead. And now he will sit on the throne of Father David. Now he will kick out these hated occupying forces 
the Romans who had occupied Israel. And then that beautiful kingdom of peace and righteousness will come. Jesus has raised Lazarus from the dead and he himself was raised from the dead after the crucifixion. He died, he was laid in the tomb and on the early Sunday morning, John and Peter come, they see the linen, the grave cloths, they see how the stone that was rolled in front of the entrance had been lifted up and put aside. They saw the shape of the body still intact, but empty, like an empty cocoon. He had raised through the linen. And when you understand that, then you suddenly realize that the stone was not removed to let Jesus out, but to let us in so that we could see. Because if linen doesn't keep you, then a stone doesn't keep you. And later he stands in the midst of his disciples in a closed room and they get very frightened and say, no, it's me. Peace on you. So the bodily resurrection is a fact, a fact in history. Jesus, the first one. And one day when he comes in glory, those who are with him and of him, who had put their faith and trust in him, they will be resurrected in a first resurrection. The Shekhinah will come, the cloud will come, the trumpet will sound. And then those who died in Christ will rise first. And then together with the living, who will be changed in the twinkling of an eye, get their beautiful resurrection body in a moment, in a split second, and together we will welcome him and bring him in. And then he will sit on the throne of his father, David. And then the beautiful kingdom of peace and righteousness will fill the earth.